So I just bought seven pallets of lost cargo here in this U-Haul behind me. Trash, treasure, I don't know, but let's hop in and hope I didn't lose all my money. Let's go. Well, hey there, folks, and welcome back to the utter depths of the entire internet and certainly here on YouTube. So these seven pallets of lost cargo that I'm about to go through, it would take way too long to go through the entire pallets with you. So I'm gonna go through like half a pallet or one pallet. We can discover things together as we go through it. But I have a system in place where I have a sortable system. I'd say 80% of this stuff is stuff that ends up being either donation straight to thrift store, there will be a little bit of garbage, straight up garbage. And then a lot of this stuff is also like five to 10 to $15 items that usually don't do well selling online, either they're not popular or by the time you you spend time investing on, on the, the listing and the pictures and the shipping and after selling fees and such and you're only making three to four dollars on that stuff when you can actually get three to four dollars having your own garage sale or flea market and there's also this store mckay's that is in tennessee here uh, down in the southeast and uh, i think north carolina and maybe and maybe another state but mckay's i've been bringing stuff up there i shouldn't say it then i've done it once and they pay cash or trade in value and they actually pay pretty decent price. Not as much as if you if you did your own garage sale or flea market per se. However, it's a good it's a good strategy to just get rid of stuff, get a few bucks, trade it in. If you're a reseller, you can trade in some stuff that's maybe in your death pile, bring it to a store like McKay's, trade it in. Uh, and buy stuff that does sell. Hopefully we can find some treasures. Usually there's a few treasures in there. And as you'll see, it is all just completely random stuff. And see, you have something like this, which I'm guessing maybe 10 to $15 online. And it's just not really worth all the shipping and listing, unless it's on Amazon and I'm not restricted. I could sell this. See, it's only nine bucks, 10 bucks at Macy's. So I'm guessing I could get like two or three dollars at a flea market or a garage sale, or maybe I can bring it up to McKay's and trade it in. So uh, a lot of this kind of stuff does end up being sorted into a that kind of pile, flea market, garage sale, possibly McKay's. Same with this kind of stuff. The top doesn't look that great. The way these work is you're you're basically bidding on what you can see on the top only. Kind of like Storage Wars, if you've seen that show, when they open the door in the uh, and you're just kind of bidding on what you can see in the, in the photos. Same thing with this, you're just bidding on what you can see in the top layer. So it's pretty much like a blind bid. There is a little bit of risk, of course, so but it's fun it's a treasure hunt that's why i continue to do it and uh nothing on the top looks too appealing so hey maybe we wasted our money this week <laughs> so there's the six pallets the seventh fell off the ramp no fun no bueno so i had to unload it there but this is all the stuff that i took off the top of these boxes because uh, just to loosen the weight or lessen the weight so I can pull it down the ramp easier because it's, it's hard. Go through this box here first. Um, I just need a break. I'm going to grab some water. Like this is pretty cool. We got the, uh, the Blu-ray for Star Wars collection. I don't know what that's worth, but I'll put it up on the screen. I'm sure these models, you know, looks like, a, you know, the torn box, but, uh, I don't know this brand. I love Kit. I'm not sure if that's anything. Um, got this pop figure. It looks like it might be autographed. I don't know if that's real on the box or not. I mean, it's in a plastic case, which makes me think it might be real. But I really can't tell. It kind of looks like it's printed on there. But I'm not sure. Um, I've unpackaged up. Same thing. So, I don't know. Maybe there were something. Here's a, you know, camera. So I'm sure this is like, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks, something like that. But as you can see, who knows what to think. But there's another KLC. So there's three. If these are worth anything, that's pretty good. Here's some of the larger stuff I took off the top. Don't know if these are worth anything. I think this brand is, is a good one. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but that was on top. You see some, obviously, it's probably a lot of lost Amazon stuff in here. Really don't know what's in there. That looks like it's broken and this is all the stuff that fell off you can see a lot of this stuff is just like cheap knockoff uh hair dryers and such but a lot of this stuff is the kind of things i'm talking about not really valuable and also i don't think these are really that suitable for flea markets or garage sales this kind of stuff i end up just donating to, to thrift stores and this is stuff that i'm going to look through um 
Not sure if it has value, but you know, it's nice packaging. So I set it aside, found some Oakley's, Oakley sunglasses, and um, you know, a lot of little things like ink cartridges. We're gonna speed it up here because as you can see, it's, this is mostly just stuff that goes straight to the uh, thrift store. It doesn't even meet the standards to, to go to a flea market or a garage. Sale. And then you have little hidden gems. You gotta have a keen eye. Uh, find this thing. I thought it was worth more than it actually is. It's only about 60 bucks, and that's assuming that it's an unlocked phone. I thought this was sure for a couple hundred bucks, but um, hopefully it's uh, unlocked and I can even sell it. And then there's boxes like this. This entire pallet was full. Uh, I don't know what these are. They're like mop sponges or what they are in cheap hoses like this. Uh, probably not probably doesn't even work very well. You can feel the quality. It just sucks. This is some cheap generic product These things a lot of these herb scissors and then whatever these things are. I don't even know But 99% of the box was all this stuff and it took that many Trash bags to fill all that stuff uh, so I think there's seven trash bags full of that stuff. Stuff here on this back fence. This is all stuff here that I'm going to be selling at a garage sale and flea market. Uh, this is all things that might sell on eBay, but between the shipping cost fees uh, and the selling price, it just doesn't really make much sense. Something like this. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. I'm guessing this is like maybe 40 bucks. These VTech toys are, they look more expensive than they actually are by the time you ship it and pay fees. And this is a really large item. So I might only make maybe 10 bucks if that on eBay, or I can probably get 10 to 15 bucks at, uh, at a flea market. And it's just easier to do that or a garage sale. And then these are just a few things. I have some stuff inside of stuff that I will be selling on eBay. Just a random smattering at a couple of these Kindle scribes here. Don't know the value. I did find this cool rabbit. I'm not sure what it is. It's in a cool package. It says rabbit AI companion. And when I looked it up on eBay, there was only three results and it was for cases for this and there wasn't many available. So, um, I'm pretty sure this is probably an item that you can't sell on eBay. However, I did check out Mercari. It sells uh, pretty regularly on Mercari, anywhere from $100 to $200 or more. Uh, I'll have to look at this more just in a brief search. So this is the kind of thing, that's what I use Mercari for, is things that seem to be um, you're not able to sell on sites such as eBay. So I'll send, a, a send this in uh, on Mercari and see what I can get for that. And uh, same with these things. This was a kind of fun find. These makeshift uh, plush, they're all like limited edition. And depending on what you can get, some of these go for $150, $200, $50. I'd say $50 at the low end. I didn't look at which one that happens to be, but they're, well, this is a Plague Doctor plush and they're all like very limited edition, you know, one of 4,000 type things. So this is all stuff I will be selling online. Uh, on eBay, Bass Pro Shops, the uh, Life Fest goes for like 40 bucks or so. Found some old cards and I'm getting more back into cards. I don't know about you guys. I used to, uh, growing up, I was into cards. That was like my thing. That's what I wasted all my allowance on. And I just started watching Sports Card Investor, I think is the YouTube channel. And it got me thinking about cards again. And when I get these in lots, which basically the, the pallets, as long as I've already I uh, got my money back and more. I'm thinking instead of sell the cards, because this doesn't sell for a lot, so I'm going to go through. I'll probably open these up and look for some Jordan cards and maybe even set it in to get graded. Uh, so we'll see. I'm not exactly sure. It's just a thought right now. And we're back getting our hands dirty and our pants soiled. A lot of this stuff ends up going straight to the thrift store. Again, there's just a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense that people are even buying. It shouldn't be lost cargo because it shouldn't have been sent. But uh, I did find four boxes of these uh, walkie-talkies. So that was a good score. A couple hundred bucks at the, the bottom of this box. So let's summarize the day, shall we? I spent $2,500 on this stuff, which for seven pallets roughly is like $350 a piece or so, uh, which is actually a really good price. Normally I'm paying five to $800 each. I don't know if it was like a back to school or just, you know, in this economy kind of situation. But regardless, as you saw, there's still risk. Even though I didn't pay a ton of money, there's always risk in this. And you saw in that one box, 350 bucks, and I lost all 100, 350 bucks on that one box. So hopefully 
I did well. I think I did well on one box in particular. Let me show you what I did find. All of these, which they looked really cheap when I first picked them up. But um, they're like these wind chimes, Koshi. And they're actually really pretty. I, I started to put them in uh, bags to go straight to the thrift store just because they felt so light and cheap. But I had so many of them. I just decided to look them up on eBay and not assume that they were worthless. And I'm thankful I did because they seem to be selling anywhere from $40 to $50 a piece. And then I have, I think, 20 in this box. I think this is all of them. I might have a few stragglers. So say, you know, at best, if I get 50 bucks a piece times 20, that's a thousand bucks. Obviously, there's there's fees involved. Overall, I'm guessing I paid maybe, I don't know, $5 a piece for these. Uh, if we were to do the math of all the items I'm taking home, the hundreds of items that I got from these pallets. So say I'm in it for five bucks and then eBay, let's just call it 15%. So that's another 15. So 20 bucks minus shipping. Let's call this five, five to six bucks for shipping on each of these. Just call it another hundred bucks. I wanted to go over some of the pros and cons overall of this. I've been doing these liquidation pallets for uh, a good three, four, five years. And another pro is you're getting a lot of items all at once. Kind of like a community sale where you go to a community that might have 50 sales and it's all in one place and it's really convenient versus driving uh, to point A, B, C, D, E all over town and you're suddenly on a weekend, you're driving 50 or 60 miles just to hit up six or seven garage sales or thrift stores. Now all this stuff is all in one box, like a giant community sale party in a box. I'm going to end up with, I don't know, it's, it's easily over 500 items all at once. And uh, to put that a little perspective, I would say that's a few months worth of garage sales and thrift stores combined to get 500 plus items. That's just a lot of items and I'm getting it all within. Uh, in this case, it took me about two days, two, two and a half, three days to go through everything. And there's a variety and you get such a variety of stuff. I really love the, the diversification of the stuff you get. I know some sellers out there do really well sticking to just a few categories. And I actually kind of admire that some days. It keeps it simpler and you kind of become a authority or an expert a lot faster. But I'm a sell all. I'm a little bit of a merchandise and inventory slut, if you will. And another pro is a lot of this, 99% of this stuff is brand new, basically. This is lost cargo. This is stuff that people are buying online and it just never makes it to the intended recipient. Uh, so a lot of this stuff ends up being brand new, which is pretty cool when selling online that you have a lot of brand new stuff. And because of the amount of stuff, I never have a gap in my listing unless I choose to be lazy about it. But otherwise I have 10, 15, 20 items to list every single day for weeks on end all the while. I can also go out and source. So I, I'm never looking at any kind of gap between listing days. So I'm always feeding that that uh, eBay algorithm. Now, a few of the cons is that it's very time intensive. Yes, I just mentioned uh, how good it is to get that much stuff in a short amount of time, but that's when I said two or three days, I mean, that's three 12 hour days of just sorting through this stuff, depending on how you want to sell. Like I, I put stuff straight, some stuff is straight garbage. Some stuff goes to a thrift store. Some stuff goes to uh, the store McKay's up, up in Tennessee that I bring stuff to to trade it in. Some stuff goes to a flea market and garage sale pile. And then of course I have Amazon and eBay Mercari stuff that I'm going to sell. And then there's also a few things obviously that Papa gets to keep for himself. And one of the biggest cons in buying this much stuff is that the majority of every box is unsellable stuff or at best like flea market and garage sale stuff that is the majority but i would say that that 80 20 principle uh, certainly applies here where 20 percent of that seven pallets that i just bought ends up actually being worth selling and, and, and is going to make the money versus the 80 percent of the rest of the stuff is just stuff that i'm not going to make a penny from uh, and maybe maybe a small percentage of that 80 percent will make a few bucks at a garage sale or a flea market but the majority of the stuff you have to have an outlet for and it's really easy to overwhelm local thrift stores when you pull up with my pickup truck and they just can't take three pickup trucks in a day. So I have to do it spread out through, through different thrift stores, different days. And I usually just try to do one pickup truck, one, one load per day to a different place just to, until it goes. And sometimes it takes three, four, five trips. Another possible con is how much money this can tie up all at once, depending on what kind of money you have to spend and invest on the inventory. This can really tie up a lot of your funds all at once because some of this stuff may sell pretty quickly, but some of this stuff just for the time intense that it goes through to list all this stuff, some stuff's going to take longer as we all know to sell. And when you're spending 2,500 bucks 
all at once. Typically that might take, this is going to be completely subjective, of course, to everyone, but 2,500 bucks, that would probably take me three months worth of thrift stores and garage sales to go out and spend that amount of money. All the while I would be, of course, making money and returning that on the investment. So that 2,500 bucks, uh, depending on depending on where you're at in your in your uh, storied reselling career, that might be a lot of uh, funds to tie up. But I've been doing this for four or five years. If you're interested in these liquidation pallets, just Google liquidation pallets near you. Sometimes if it's not near you, you can find uh, other third party companies that deliver the pallets or the liquidation pallets to you. Or you can go pick them up if they're not too far away. I know plenty of sellers who do that. So that's it for this one. Thanks for hanging out, guys. And we'll see you on the wires.